starts with accepting our true identity of who we are. Right. I'm a child of God. Mm-hmm. And you know, there are people who have really tough time acknowledging that, even saying that. There's been times when Tracy and I are ministering to someone that we will ask them to say it with their mouths, God loves me. And I will tell you, there's been many times where that person who's struggling, who the enemy's got buffeted, who's got tied up in fear and anxiety, they can't say those simple words, God loves me. God loves me. We have to embrace who we are. And we are loved by God. We're children of God. And we've been given authority by God. He's told us, resist the devil and he will flee. We can resist fear as well. Because fear is coming. If it's not coming from God, where's it coming from? Yeah. yeah. There's not many other answers. It's just that one way or the other. So I want to just explore three different reasons why we can face our fears. Three things that I think are very simple. But if we can get these into our hearts, I believe we position ourselves to just experience an outpouring of God. They're very simple. Number one, we are not alone. Number two, the one who is with us, because we're not alone, we can trust. And number three, the one who is with us is what we've been talking about. He loves us. We're not alone. The one we're with, we can trust. And the one we're with, he loves us. That's powerful. You're not alone. Isaiah 41 to 10. So, <laughs> do not fear, for I am with you. We can stop right there. Do not fear, I am with you. I like having points of contact on my person all the time. So, almost always, Tracy's mom gave me this cross. It's from Israel. It's made out of olive wood. She also gave me anointing oil uh, from Israel. And I anointed this sucker. And I keep that in my pocket. And so when I'm navigating through stuff, nobody has to know. I reach out of my pocket and I'm like, yeah, he's with me. It's not this silly cross that's with me. He's with me, right? But sometimes my carnal mind has to be adjusted. So I have a point of contact to say, okay, yep. Yeah, there it is. There it is. I would encourage you. You don't have to have a physical thing. But you should be saying to yourself through your day as things get challenging in your day to say, he's with me. I don't like this, but he's with me. I like that. You're not alone. God will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Well, what about when I don't feel it? It's not about feelings. It's about the truth of what has been said. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere. Mm -hmm. Now, I know that's easy to say when you're not going through the pit of it. Right? When you're not in the darkest of the dark or you're not in, in a, facing a giant in front of you, I understand that. But if we can get this, I tell you what, tell, you, tell yourself this in, in the times that are easier because what you will need it in the times that are tougher. Right. He is with you. He won't leave you. He won't forsake you. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. High, death, breath, nothing. Man cannot. Fear cannot. But what fear does is it blinds us to see. What fear does is shuts our ears up to hear. What fear does is cause us to fight everything and run off. But nothing can separate us from God's love. And if God is for you, who? Who dares to be against you? There's one who does dare. It's the enemy. He dares to do it. He's stupid. Jesus whooped him. He came to Jesus after 40 days of fasting, not even for 40 days, knowing that he's facing the cross, taking the sins of the world, including yours and mine, on his back. And he is getting attacked in that moment. And he woke him. And he went to the cross and Satan said, ah, and the disciples believed the lie and they run off. (laughs) Three days later, he rises again. Hallelujah. He is for you. The one that's defeated death, hell, sin, and the grave is for you. Who could be against you? 
Somebody can pretend like they're against you. <laughs> That's fine. But we need to understand. No weapon formed against me is going to prosper. Yes. But So I would encourage you. If he's with you. If you're not alone. Then why do we feel isolated? Why do we feel sometimes. When we have fear and anxiety. Like no one's there. Have you ever been in that mood, in that tone, in that emotional state, and you could be in the middle of Dollywood, and it was like you're alone? It's like you, nobody gets it. Nobody understands. That's a lie. He understands. He is with you. But here's the thing. We can choose to isolate ourselves. Doesn't mean God isn't there. But we're not acknowledging or embracing. We're not seeking. We're not drawing to him. And what does the enemy describe as? A roaring lion. You ever watch those nature shows? Tracy doesn't like them because the little animals get ate up by the lions and the cheetahs. But how does the lion do it, right? He hides in the high grass. Can't be seen. And he's waiting for that little gazelle to go away from the herd to be all alone. Or he's waiting for the one that's hurt to be stumbling around and get separated from the herd. And then that's when he's going to pounce. That's when he's going to attack. And what is he attacking? Him? To seek, to kill, to destroy. When we isolate ourselves, it's a choice. It's not about what we feel. It's saying, you know what? It's a choice to say, I'm going to separate myself. The only thing you should be separating yourself is when God says, come out from amongst them. Separate yourself from evil. Live a life of righteousness. That's the things we separate from, not from God. God is omnipresent. He is there. But the enemy is looking for you to go ahead isolate yourself. We see this time and time and time again where somebody is just struggling and you see them going through and their health has problems or finances or relationships are crumbling around. And it's like, I just don't feel God. When's the last time you prayed? Right. When's the last time you really got into this? When's the last time you spent more time thinking about him than you thinking about your problem? And it's not a rebuke. I'm just saying we all have been there. We've all been in that space. But here's the truth of the matter is, is that God hasn't left. Continue to seek him. And if you're not feeling him, if we don't have that experience with him in our darkness, in our shadow, in our trouble, in our challenge, in our, in our trial... Press in more. Because what he's telling you, he's beckoning you to come closer. Yes. And what he's saying is you need to come closer or you're not going to survive. Right. Draw to me. Don't be denied me. Have such diligence that you're hungry, thirsting as if you're starving, as if you haven't had a drink and you're in a desert. Come after me. We all have seasons of dark. Dry, ugly. This is a time when we need to look at the word and say, I'm going to pray without ceasing. I'm going to meditate on this word day and night. This is what's going to be in my mind. You know, we all need these mental breaks, right? When you do things and whatever you do to relieve that. But when you're in a battle like that, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But they're mighty and drawing down the strongholds of the enemy. This is the sword you need. You need the breastplate of righteousness. You need to keep that helmet of salvation on. You need the, the truth shot around you. You need the sandals on your feet. Your readiness. I've got such a great visual of this. So our oldest grandson. We used to watch a lot, and he lived with us for several different years of time uh, when you look at it all put together. And uh, he would love almost, I mean, monthly to create the armor of God out of cardboard and trash and whatever he could find. But, man, this little guy, I've got a video. I've got to find it. But he comes out and he's got like a cardboard helmet on. Mimi's made him a breastplate that's tied on with twine. You know, he's got a cardboard sword. He's got sandals that she's wrapped. She found some leather stuff. She's wrapped around his feet. He's got the belt. And he goes, 
I am the righteousness of God. And he comes out and he's just going, and I'm like, I'm saying, I'm, I'm give an altar call, take up an offering. I am in, man. But you know what? We need to know that when we put those things on, we can battle fear. Yeah. We can overcome that. We can face our fears because of greater is he who's in me than he that's in this world. Yes. We have that promise that we can stand on. <laughs> Facing fear, you can trust the one you're with, God. Trust is a tricky thing. It's earned, right? And when trust is broken, it's hard. It's hard to rebuild that. It's hard to bring that back. But if you're honest with yourself, look at your relationship with God and just ask yourself, has he ever broken my trust? Or something else happened? Did something else occur? Psalm 56, 3. When I'm afraid, I put, this is David, I put my trust in you. In God, whose word I praise. In God I trust and am not afraid. What <laughs> can mere mortals do to me? You can face your fears because you can trust the one that you're with, and that's God. Yeah. You can face your fears. He's faithful, it says, to a thousand generations. Everything around you can fail. You can be betrayed. You can be stabbed in the back so many times you can't even feel like you can hold water. And you can be abandoned. But guess what? God is not the one doing any of those things. He's the one that you can trust and turn to. His word is truth. His plans are higher. And he's never failed. And he's not going to start with you. It doesn't matter what it looks like or what it seems like or what it feels like. What matters is us saying, I know I can trust you. Amen. The biggest question he's asked me in my life, and he's asked it multiple times, is this. Jeff, do you trust me? Do you trust me? Someone recently gave me a word, and it was just that. Is that, do you trust me? And that word was, you have had faith in me before. Be steadfast. But trust. Trust in me. Trust in him. Don't move, be moved by what you see. Don't be moved by circumstances or situations. Don't be moved by that. Be moved by a mighty God. That's greater than any of the trouble you may have. Any of the challenges that you may have. We can lean on him when we're weak and we don't understand we can lean into him. He will be strong. He will empower us. He will give us all that we need. He will make us be courageous when we're facing things that we'd rather cower away from. He can be trusted. And fear can be overcome when we trust. You know, my, my grandkids do silly things and they trust their papa sometimes too much. But the, the reality is they'll do things that they're phys they physically cannot do on their own, but they trust, I'm going to catch them. I'm going to lift them. I'm going to keep them safe. They trust in that. If they can trust in me, <laughs> who's flawed, how much more can we trust in the mighty God? Yes. Who's not? Who's not flawed? The one who is with us can be trusted, and as a result, we can face our fears. And we can make it through any valley. We can overcome every mountain. We can illuminate and be illuminated in any darkness. If you can't embrace anything else, embrace this. You are loved. God loves you. Some of us have had difficulty in our lives experiencing that. Um, I've been blessed that uh, I can't imagine having better parents than I had, loving and kind and giving and nurturing, but I'm very well aware that's not everyone's experience. But this is what 1 John 4, 18, there's no fear in love. A perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment, and the one who fears is not made perfect in love. Jesus is the only one, who, and God Almighty, who's expressed perfect love. Greater love has no one in this than the one who lays down his life. And he laid down his life for you and your loved. So despite the fact that there may have been people in your lives who should have loved you who didn't, 
abused that privilege? Or you've been to the situation where someone who should have stayed with you abandoned you or betrayed you? God's not like that. He's true. He's faithful. He loves. Perfect love casts out fear. There's only one that gives us perfect love. I love her to death, but my love isn't perfect. She can get rid of her fear if she looks to Jesus and says, perfect love casts out fear. Perfect love casts out fear. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter. But we need to embrace that. Love is a gift, but it has to be embraced. So here's an example. Probably isn't such a great one, but so I was thinking about this. Every time I come in this building, there's a person that's greeting me by the name of James Pack. I can count on him. He's going to be there. Now, I know from the first day I got here, well, the first day he wanted to inspect my bag because he didn't know who I was and I carried this thing. He calls a man purse. So, you know, I'm praying for James. But, but uh, anyway, he didn't inspect me. <laughs> but I can guarantee you that when I walk in, his hand's coming my way. He's going to shake my hand. He's going to give me a hug around the, the shoulder. And we're going to exchange some words that are usually funny. I could choose. I choose to receive that. And I choose to engage in that. And we, we choose together to not worry so much about other people trying to get in the door. Because I'm kind of wide. So we're going to take just a few moments when I come into church, but but I'm prepared for that. I could also choose to just come in the door and just walk right back. Hmm? Hey, give him the nod, you know, whatever. But I choose because I like to engage with James because he reminds me of my father-in-law. <laughs> he's a little sassy and he's spunky and all that stuff. I like that. <laughs> Here's, like I said, this isn't maybe the greatest example, but God's extending love, and there he is. He heard me talking about him. Now he's got his fire on me. Man, <laughs> Lord Joe's not here. I'm in big trouble. Call the elders. I'm ready. I didn't know that. So, God love you. So, here's the thing. It's God's, I know James is going to extend his hand to me. He's going to, I know that's going to happen, right? You know God's extending his love towards you. But we can choose how we're going to accept it and embrace it. Or we can just shrug it off. Don't shrug it off. Don't shrug it off. Embrace James. More importantly, embrace the Lord. But we have to do that. It's a gift. And we have to receive it. God's giving it to us. And just because we're not feeling it, sometimes it might be because we're like, we're supposed to resist the devil, not God. I would encourage you. God spoke to me a while back, and he said to me uh, something about how I love my children. And he was telling me how he loved me that way. And I said, yeah, I, 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 I feel that. I know that. I know that. And he goes, but sometimes you put up a little wall and you don't allow yourself to experience all of me. And I was like, oh, really? I don't want to do that. And he goes, I want you to want all of me and I want to give all of me to you. But that's largely up to you about how you receive and how you prepare to receive me. And it, it requires you to get a mindset that he really loves you. Sometimes I'll share with you a story about how God expressed to Tracy that he really loved her. And, and she kind of said, oh, come on. Really? Not like that. It's not that she was rejecting God's love. But in the way he demonstrated it to her, it was it was hard for her to, to comprehend because it didn't line up with her experience in some ways. So I just encourage you, embrace his love. Revival will come as a gift of his love. But we have to be ready to receive it and be prepared. Fear will occupy us 
and that will keep us from completely embracing what God has. And so we'll be distracted and we'll be concerned. It's not a problem to be concerned about things. But take your cares to the one who can deal with it. Yes. Lay them down. Come to me, he says. All of you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you what? Rest. Oh, some of us need to rest. Some of us need to lay some things down at the foot of the cross. We don't want to be consumed by fear, but we want to be consumed by God's love. So I want to wrap up tonight as we talk about fear. We have a decision that we can make. Are we going to walk in a space that's dominated by anxiety and fear? Or are we going to walk in a space dominated by power, <laughs> love, <laughs> and a sound mind? Are we going to embrace the fact that we are not alone? You know, sometimes when you feel alone, it's a scary place to be. You know, you think about a little kid, like when he's getting ready to get out of maybe mommy and dad's room and he's going into his own room and it's like, maybe you could leave a light on. Maybe you could lay with me till I fall asleep. And even though as a papal, I love all that stuff. But you know, they have to overcome this thing because it's like, oh my, I'm by myself. What's going to happen? You know, what, 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 am I okay? You're okay. You're not alone. And the one you're with, you can absolutely trust. He will never harm you. He will never do ill to you. But he's working for your good. And he does that because he loves you. He loves you enough that he laid down his son's life for you. It's powerful. That same God who says, don't fear. But I give you power, love, and sound mind is the one that just looked down and said, you all are worth it. You're worth my son paying this great price. You're worth it. So don't let anybody ever tell you something different. Don't believe that lie. It's not for us to get swelled up. But it's us to say, oh, wow. God Almighty loves me. God Almighty is with me. I can trust God Almighty because he Love me so much that he said, I'm going to be willing to let my son come and suffer just for you. So I want to experience all of that kind of God. I want to experience everything he has for me. But to do that, I need to position myself in a space that says, I'm going to reject fear. I'm going to just put that away. God gave me a message a while back called Reject Rejection. Sometimes when we get rejected, that can cause us fear. It's like, oh man, I'm going to be all alone. And what's going to happen? What's going to happen? God never will reject you. He loves you. He cares for you. He died for you. So we can face our fears and know that it's not our battle anyway. Whatever it looks like, it's his. We're in it. But he's the one that's in charge. He's the one that's going to bring the victory. So just look forward to say, you know what? This is going to be a great story. This is going to be a great testimony. This is going to be something that is going to be unbelievable. And guess what? What the enemy intended to kill me, I'm going to just, I just know God's going to take it and use it for good. Right. And guess what? He's going to use it for his kingdom. And someday you'll find yourself telling somebody, you know, I went through the same kind of thing that you're going through right now. And here's what God did for me. And maybe that person hasn't ever had a chance to experience Jesus. Maybe that's what leads him right to the throne of God. God loves you. Pastor Jeff here. Thank you for joining us for our second part of facing our fear. You know, God wants us to overcome fear. We can trust him. He loves us. He's always there with us. And so I want to encourage you, check out our other resources. You can find them all on our Restoration Ministries TN.com website, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Spotify links. We have a blog that you can check out and be encouraged by. You can order Tracy's book, uh, Enable Yourself to Receive, upcoming events, book opportunities, and even if you feel in your heart to give. So go this week now and have a great week.